and welcome to my channel. This is your girl Megan with Fit Financial Planning. Thank you so much for joining me and yeah, it's great to be here. It's great to be with you. To all my returning subscribers, welcome. If you're new to this channel, welcome and thank you so much for joining. Um, I hope you've enjoyed our series so far. It is about a life insurance. And um, it wouldn't be an educational video or an educational channel if we didn't tackle the terminology. So you know me, the babes of the ABCs. <laughs> so we need to get through the life insurance or risk planning terminology or jargon so that you will understand um, later on when I start using these words in our teaching um, videos. So we need to understand the terminology and I'm going to break down what it means. All right. So uh, remember, none of my videos constitute financial advice. I'm just a girl who's here to plug you with the information you need about the products that you've bought or if you're contemplating on buying any of these products through your financial advisor or through direct marketing. You need to understand how these products work and how you can benefit and maximize these products. All right, so let's get straight into it. Some of these terms you might have heard me um, you know, speak about in my previous video where I did an overview of life cover. So some of these might be a repeat, but I'll definitely have the description um, of each of these terms in the description box below. So just scroll down the video and read up on what they mean and if maybe you know I explained it too quickly and if you want further information i'll leave a link or two in the description where you can go to a website and read on how um you know some of these terms work and how they're incorporated in life cover all right our first term would be an accelerated benefit an accelerated benefit obviously is a benefit that is linked to your life cover all right so it's a benefit that is a rider some policies call it a rider benefit um, and it's a benefit that reduces your life cover amount. So let's say you have 5 million rand life cover and you take out an accelerated product that is linked to it, which is either your disability benefit or your critical illness benefit. Um, that, and let's say then that is worth 2 million rand um, of cover. That is then linked to your life cover policy. Should you claim for critical illness or disability, the 2 million rand reduces, will reduce your life cover amount. So the 5 million will not be 5 million anymore after the claim event, you will be left with 3 million rand life cover. Okay, so it basically eats into your life cover because it's an accelerated benefit. Accelerated benefits are cheaper, all right, because they obviously reduce your life cover benefits, okay? And you can have these benefits as a standalone, but right now we're just explaining um, the uh, accelerated benefit, right? Just remember, accelerated means, just imagine a car, you know, you put foot down, acceleration, the car goes fast. What does this mean? It just means that your life cover will run out much quicker if you have an accelerated benefit or reduces at a rapid rate okay other than um, having a standalone benefit where you claim critical illness your life cover stays intact okay so it's another way of you know affordability wise if standalone uh, products are more expensive and it's not within your budget then you can obviously have an accelerated benefit linked so that you at least have critical illness and you at least have disability benefit Although it might eat into your life cover, but should anything happen while you are still alive, you are still covered. Okay, so we need to look at insurance as yes, it's for death, but what happens when I'm still alive and something happens? I need to be able to benefit from these products. All right. Our second uh, term here would be accidental death. So it's another rider benefit. It's an additional benefit that you buy. So accidental death is an add-on to your life cover policy. Um, some policies or some companies have accidental death as a standalone. So you can, you can just buy accidental cover on its own. Um, I know a lot of um, you know, direct marketing companies um, like Platinum Life, they like selling these type of products. 
or through your bank or through your insurance policy if you look at your insurance your, your short-term insurance schedule you'll see accidental death is a benefit that is an add-on onto your short-term insurance policy and they say um there's a uh, a benefit of 10,000 rand accidental death benefit, you know, and you're probably paying five rand for that benefit. So have a look at your short-term insurance policy. You will uh, mostly find this accidental death benefit. Um, so basically, it compensates you um, due to death as a result of death, obviously, and then it's paid to the beneficiaries. All right, you'd have to list a beneficiary. Um, some of the policies also cover you if you lose a limb, so due to an accident, if you lose your arm or your leg, then, you know, they do cover you for that, all right. So there are obviously restrictions to that, but you just need to read the fine print of the policy schedule. Then our next term would be annual benefit increase. What is an annual benefit increase? So just listen to the, to the term annual, meaning yearly benefit, meaning your benefit increase. It means that when you take out an insurance policy, your cover, your benefit increases every year. OK, depending on obviously the type of um, <clears throat> premium pattern you take, you can also select the benefit premium. So most times you would take out a policy where every year your benefit increases and the benefits increased from a range uh, between three to five percent. So depending on the company. So you'll also they're also abbreviated as ABI. So if you look at your a life insurance policy you will see a term called abi which is annual benefit increase all right so that's just how much your benefit increases every month and this is all um you know selected at, at quote stage so when an advisor is doing a quote for you they will then you know plug in these different um these different figures and then you will be able to you know determine the premium and the, and how much it's going to cost okay the cost of your insurance product is determined by obviously all these things that are selected like your annual benefit increase and as i'm going to explain now in your in our next term which is our annual premium increase or some companies refer to it as your annual contribution increase which is your aci okay this is now how much your contribution increases by okay so usually the abi the annual benefit increase and the aci a annual contribution increase or annual premium increase they work hand in hand all right with some other companies so when you're doing a quote you can select a specific rate how much the annual premium is going to increase by and automatically it links to the annual benefit increase to say if you're going to increase the premium every month by cpi which is your consumer price index then the benefit should also increase by at least three percent so it's always linked okay um at times you can select different but it's usually all it works together it is linked all right, so how is your ACI, how do you determine it? Your ACI basically is your annual contribution increase, meaning that how much should your premium increase by, okay? So they are, they are different rates. So it, it could either be, as I said, with CPI, CPI, the consumer price index, meaning that where your CPI basically means how much, it's like inflation, how much does a basket of goods cost a consumer every year and we've also you know established that the basket of goods that cost 200 rand five years ago doesn't it's, it's not the same amount today all right so meaning that your premiums always have to increase so that your benefit can also increase in order for you to be able to afford whatever it is that you need to afford to in today's value all right i hope that makes sense because remember, your benefit might be worth a million rand today, but in 10 years, in 10 years time, that 10 million rand doesn't buy the same amount of goods as it would have bought if you had claimed, you know, so it's the, basically the value of your benefit. We're trying to increase the value of your benefit by increasing the premium. And obviously, you're not going to get a benefit for free without paying for it. So um, 
the premium needs to increase accordingly. Then your, your premiums can increase obviously via CPI plus 3%, CPI plus 5% or at CPI only. All right. But guaranteed your premiums will increase and also, um, you know, they'll increase as per your age as well, depending on the type of quote that you accept. All right. So another term that you'll see in the, um, in your policy schedule is your actual age or your attained age so remember um your quoting criteria will determine how much the premium would be um for your for you as a person so this is your personal risk okay so your actual age would be the age that you are today all right um so let's say today i am 34 years old when i do a quote today this is how much the premium will be and let's say i um, select an age rated uh, premium pattern meaning that should i not take out this quote now or there are delays and the first of october is my birthday meaning that when i am 35 the quote might not even be valid because i have aged one year all right so that means that whenever there's a birthday the premium would increase so with some policies your premium increases at your birthday and premium also increases at anniversary when it's the anniversary of the policy okay so just just note that whenever you see actual age that's what it means then you will also note a term called evocation all right I'll, I'll put it down here below it's evocation what does evocation mean so it's basically like a hobby it's another fancy word for a hobby all right but a hobby that is uh, a bit extreme all right so it's not something like reading a book or going for walks or you know going for walks in the park no so evocation is something that is quite extreme that people don't do often so evocations would be um like skydiving scuba diving snowboarding bungee jumping um you know um or working you know in extreme conditions um, but not often so basically this determines your risk profile you know with the insurance company so if you have extreme activities that you do on a daily basis or very often then you are at risk of claiming for either a disability um you know event or a life event meaning you might even die you know so it always then affects your rate okay so a person who has zero evocations and compared to a person who bungee jumps, skydives, mountain climbs, um, the premium, the rate will be different because it's two different risk profiles, okay? So when you look at um, evocation, you will then remember that, oh, it's the extreme things that I do do um, and that will determine then how much, you know, the premium would be. And this would be noted, you know, in the application form. They will ask you these questions and it's always advisable to be forthcoming with these um these evocations if you have any right our next um, term here would be um, your beneficiary beneficiary straightforward is these are the you know people that would inherit um, any you know cash value or the life cover value that would be you know um, awarded to them so you always have to have a beneficiary should you not have a beneficiary on your life cover policy then the cash portion then on the life payout will then pay to your estate, all right, to cover any estate costs, okay. You cannot have a beneficiary on disability products or critical illness or any extended, you know, um, rider benefits. The only uh, place where you can actually have beneficiaries on life policies is under your life cover and under your funeral uh, benefit. And then, um, Obviously, you know, when you die, some policies have an immediate expense benefit, which is a cash lump sum that they pay out should there be a death event and they will pay it to the beneficiary. So those are the only times when the, you know, the benef beneficiaries will be, will inherit anything from a life policy. Okay. And then our next um, term here will be your burial insurance. So basically that's just like a funeral policy. Okay. So it's just insurance to cover, you know, the cost of the burial, 
and the funeral okay so you'll just note that different policies have different ways of terming things or describing things but it actually means the same thing all right so we're going to stop it here today we'll do a and b today i don't want these videos to be long i find when they're too long people get too bored and we don't want to bore you we want to educate you we want you to leave here knowing something that you didn't know before so thank you so much for joining me uh, it's been great having you i'll see you in our next video when we continue with the abcs of insurance till this one and take care god bless goodbye